Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and I know it's an uphill battle, but I'm going to give it a shot. So <laughs> the Big Ten and the SEC can continue to counterpunch. And I'm expecting that if they do, they're one of them is going to, they're going to counterpunch for two reasons. One is exactly what we've seen over the last year. The SEC makes a move. The Big Ten has to say, well, we got to keep up. We got to make a move. The SEC comes back and makes a move. Well, at some point, one or the other or both are going to come to a place where there's there's no more value on the board to take. They're going to assess the next program or two and say they don't provide enough value. We're good, whether that's at 18 or 24, whatever the number is. And then the other one's going to say, well, okay, they settled in. We settled in. We're assessing the board as well. We're both good at 24, 22, whatever the number is, or it could be an uneven number. Now, the Big 12, based on what it's attempting to do, or maybe not based on what you guys just brought to the table today and just maybe preliminary talks with those four or six schools out west, the Big 12, I would think, is never going to reach Big 10 or SEC levels. But they, they want to stay relevant and in the game and at least get to where their champion is going to be accepted as a legit power conference champion with entry into the playoffs. So if they can scarf up a couple more relevant schools and they get to 16 or 18, and again, even though they're not going to get the same number of spots at the table in the playoff, they at least are still regarded as a power conference of sorts. So we arrive at some place where somebody's going to get left out, whether that's, unfortunately, I, I would love to see it arrive at a place where these roughly 64 power five teams that we have currently all find a place and continue our merry way. It's just configured differently, but most likely somebody's going to get left out. And Tony, you cover a school that's doing a tremendous job of producing quality football teams without much enrollment they've got a tremendous academic reputation of course in wake forest but do schools like that get left to the side if the if the acc gets picked apart so the 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 point i would make against notre dame would be and i don't expect this but again i'm going to take up the fight that if the conferences get together and say who is notre dame to be the one team now that byu has decided to join a conference I understand there's the UMasses of the world. Nobody cares about them. So it's Notre Dame that they should, you know, we're restructuring this playoff system involving these two conferences or three or four, probably at the most. Who's Notre Dame? Freeze them out. Don't schedule them. Don't include them in the playoff. We don't need them. Make them join a conference. I, I see where you're going. I think the Big 12's survival, or not even survival, because they're going to survive this, but at least in the short term, but their long-term future does rely on getting um, schools of some consequence, as, as, as you called it, Mark. Um, they, they need to make a you know, big push for the Northwest schools. Um, hey, maybe they even make a push for Notre Dame. Why not? You know, I mean, if you're the new commissioner who's been there a week, why not pick up the phone, call Notre Dame and say, hey, what about us? Because right now you don't once you lose Oklahoma and Texas. And if you don't pick up anyone else, you don't have that marquee name for football. And Kansas basketball is only going to carry you so far. So they have to add some relevant schools with the musical chair scenario that you point out where some schools could get left out Yeah, wake forest is absolutely one that could be on the outside looking in um you know believe it or not a a legend school of the past like syracuse could get left out because what's syracuse bringing to the table for the last 10 years in any sport not just football but in pretty much anything um there are some schools that are going to be on the outside looking in um so then why should the playoff committee allow Notre Dame in? Because it's Notre Dame. And really, I'm sorry, it really is that simple. If their record, if their record justifies it, if their strength of schedule justifies it, um, because, you know, look, Greg Sankey isn't running the playoff committee. He's kind of running what's going to be the playoffs of the future, but he's not running the committee. 
and Klyovkov isn't running the playoff committee. Those group of uh, the, that diverse group of people is going to sit there and say, yeah, but look, it's still Notre Dame. And when you look at what the playoff committee pays for the rights, you know, the T or what the TV rights are paying the playoff committee and they want the brand names in there at the end of the day, as long as they're 11 and one against and, and look, you got to beat SC. You got to beat Michigan. You got to beat Michigan State. You got to have those wins still. You can't just be beating up Navy and Air Force. Um, you got to have those wins. You're 11 and one with a viable schedule. You're still going to get in because you're Notre Dame. And because when it comes to when it comes to postseason, you're you're trying to hook in not just the rabid fans like the people who watch your shows every week, Mark, or you know, read our stuff, whatever the case may be. Those are the hardcore people who are sitting here talking college football on July 5th or whatever today is. You need it's the holidays. It's it's New Year's Eve with your college football playoffs. You want to rope in a bigger audience, and Notre Dame does that. 